The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Lord, it's you, O oh Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot accept, because it neither sees nor knows him. But you know him, because he remains with you, and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me, because I live and you will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me, and whoever loves me will be loved by my Father and I will love him and reveal myself to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning. Well, praise the Lord as we gather again today, this Holy Sunday. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Make sure, if you haven't already, when Mass is over, you grab the award-winning St. Mary's Church Bulletin. Hmm? <laughs> On the very front of it is an advertisement of a, of a young adult event that we're doing this upcoming Memorial Day, and there's all the information on here. And to the Heights, as it's called, it was a young adult ministry that was started in our diocese probably back in 2014. It was started by myself, another priest, and a group of our friends, of lay people, because we saw an, a great need. We saw a need to bring people together. Because we love, first of all, we love the outdoors, we love hiking, and then we also loved our Catholic faith. And so how do we meld those two together? And so To the Heights was born. What it is, is that we go on monthly day hikes throughout the whole year. Then we also have longer retreats where we take multi-day hikes. We go camping, hiking, you name it. And it's all in an effort to draw and to bring people together. Because when we bring people together, amazing things happen. Just for example, when we did this hike that's coming up here on Memorial Day, when we did it, it tends to be our most popular hike. It draws young people from not only from Sacramento, Vacaville, Santa Rosa, the Bay Area, Marin County. It just draws everybody. Multiple priests. Father Wood of Happy Memory will, will also be joining us. When we did this same hike back in 2017, a young man by the name of Frank Bellucci, many of you may know him, he sits on our parish council. When I was still at St. Joseph's, I invited him in on that hike. And so we went. And around that same time, a young lady messages me through social media and says, Father, my name is Mary. I'm moving here from Boston to California, and I want to find a young adult community. So I said, great, come on that hike. Frank and Mary lock eyes. <laughs> One thing happened after another. They were here this morning, by the way, and I embarrassed them at the 8 a.m. Mass. They now have four kids. 2018, we take another hike to Castle Peak. You know where Castle Peak is? It's towards Truckee. It's a high little peak there when, if you ever go snowboarding, it's not too far from Boreal. And we, we did a, about 50 young people came, and we hiked up a snow peak mountain on the very top of Castle Peak there with the beautiful views of the Sierra Nevada mountains. 
I had the young people construct an altar out of the snow. And we celebrated Mass upon a snow altar. There was a young man on that hiking trip, and he was discerning God's path for him in his life. And he says, as we were having Mass on top of that castle peak, As he was gazing out into the beautiful vista, he heard God's voice. All of this I give to you. This young man now is named Father Ryan Marr, the pastor at Knight's Landing. Christian community does amazing things. You know, I've been with you now about 10 months. July will be a year. I know it probably feels longer for many of you. (laughs) But I want to share with you my vision of not only my own priestly ministry, but of what I see, St. Mary's. That I want us to be a strong, vibrant family. Everything that I envision, St. Mary's, this is what keeps me up at night, by the way, is how are we building Christian community? Because there's a great need. Just this last Tuesday, the Surgeon General of the United States released an advisory. And if you follow the social trends and the research about the United States and and the feeling of community amongst our nation, the results of that advisory from the Surgeon General was not surprising. So the Surgeon General said that the United States is experiencing and undergoing what he called an epidemic of loneliness. One in two Americans are experiencing this void of loneliness. And especially when you break down the different age demographics, It's especially hitting our young people the hardest. Which is paradoxical because supposedly we're the most connected generation that's ever existed. Social media, I mean, we we, we can be, we have these seemingly communities online. We can communicate with people from all over the world in in an instant. But our young people feel alone. And it makes complete sense. Harken back all the way to Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, in that beautiful, famous line that every single human being is created in God's image and likeness. There's the secret to human life, by the way, right there, that, that little tiny verse. Every single human being created in God's image and likeness. And Christ would reveal the deepest identity of who God is, that God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He is a trinity of love. Therefore, then, if you take that beautiful hallmark teaching of Christianity that God is a trinity, three persons, one God, a communion of love, and you and I are stamped with God's image and likeness, then what does that mean about my deepest joy and fulfillment? Will only be found in a relationship of love. There it is. It won't be found. I know the world tells us, oh, Money, power, honor, pleasure. Just keep getting more, more, and more, and then we'll find that elusive happiness. Never, never happens. The human heart, as St. Augustine says beautifully, probably one of the most famous lines outside of sacred scripture, our hearts are restless until they rest in you, O Lord. Love, unity of the Holy Trinity. And we see this beautifully today. In this gospel reading from John, Jesus begins to teach about this mysterious figure which he called the advocate. That's a weird word, advocate. Sounds very official and sterile. But when you break it down in the original Greek word, the drama begins to unfold. The advocate here in English, in Greek, is Paraclete. 
Paraclete is two Greek words fused together. Para, which means to be beside, and kaleo. Para kaleo, which literally translated means someone who is called to stand by your side. This spirit, this advocate, Jesus will give us to be with us. Because as he says here, the spirit of truth, the paraclete, will remain with you and will be in you. And in that beautiful line here, and I will not leave you orphans. You see what Jesus is doing here. He says, I will send you the Holy Spirit, which will unite all of you. Because all of us have been fractured by sin from the very beginning in the fall of Adam and Eve. When the evil one convinced us to mistrust God and original sin enters into the world, what happened there was fraction. The fractioning of the human family. Division, fighting. Christ comes to heal humanity. And I will send you the Holy Spirit. And the the other job of this advocate, the one that is called to live in us and with us and to unite the body of Christ, he says, I will lead you to truth. The twofold job of this spirit. Heal the divisions within the body of Christ and lead us to all truth. And this is where the great gift that you and I can give to the world. Because what marks Christian community as different than any other community? Because you can go all around, you can find different communities. If you're a stamp collector, I think there's still, people still collect stamps, right? Weirdos, right? You can find a bunch of group collecting weirdos, right? <laughs> I say that in love. If you love Corvettes, you can find on the weekend a group of Corvette lovers and they can go and go on the weekends, go for a nice drive. So we can find different communities, but what marks the church as different? This is the second reading today from St. Peter. He says in that second reading, Beloved, sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts. The Christian community, founded upon Christ, united to the power of the advocate, the paraclete, are those who have Christ as their center, gathered around our Lord and Savior, and in pursuit of the truth. That is what marks us as different. A few days ago, I received a voicemail message on my office line. Put in my little code, and there's a young man. He says, good afternoon, Father. I'm just starting to get back into my Catholic faith. He had left it for for a while, but he started to come back. And he asked, Father, does St. Mary's have a young adult community? A young adult group? He says, because I am striving to live out my Catholic faith. And I feel utterly alone. What he's speaking about here is that this deep need to pursue the truth, to pursue Jesus Christ, and to have brothers and sisters together striving for holiness. Father, do you have a young adult group? Because I need brothers and sisters to stay strong in the faith. And I said, oh, brother, we got plans. 
So of course I invited him on our hike, right? And then also I'm happy to announce, we had a meeting with the parish council. So the parish council is a group of advisors that the parish has where the pastor runs different ideas and, and, and we try to collaborate on how to move the parish forward in our mission. And so part of that vision, so the vision, again, remember, Christian community united in Christ. How does everything that we do as a parish builds and aims towards that vital mission? Which is why, if you remember the beginning of the year, we had that big parish picnic. 800 of us went, descended upon the park. Well, that was part of that little vision. Or, remember, we have now going on that Holy Land trip, that pilgrimage group that we have, 67 of us are going to the Holy Land this November. Again, that was part of my idea. Like, let's get together as a parish family. Let's go over to Israel. <laughs> and then now, we're doing a little tweaking in the staff in our faith formation. Our current faith formation, or youth direct coordinator, youth minister, is Andrea Aravalo. She's over here. I don't want to embarrass her too much, but she's on that side of the church. So we've been in communication with her, and this, she's at the same time has this deep desire. We're going to shift her from youth ministry and create a brand new position here at the parish called the Director of Evangelization, where now her outreach will be to help build up our families, to reach out to, family, to our parish families and to draw them together. And then we've hired a new youth minister that will begin, again, this will be happening towards the end of August. Cristina Velalacion, and she'll be coming on, and so that way she can focus her energy on the, on the youth. And then Andrea can focus on families, and then we're going to strive to build up our young adult community. And then, so, we're going to keep adding pieces to this, to eventually where the great family of God here at St. Mary's could satisfy the, this need I'm telling you, our world is hurting. Our world is fracturing. The trends show this isolation, this division, will only accelerate. And I want St. Mary's, again, my humble vision, is for us to be a family united in our love for Jesus Christ. And like with any family, of course, it's hard, isn't it? Because why? If you have a family, as we all know, our families are all made up of broken human beings. And it takes a lot of patience to live in a family. So it is with us. But we have the paraclete the one who will bind us in love. Will you join this vision? I want to build up the body here. I don't want to be alone. I need you. And so does the world. 